Okay guys, we're in here now at my CNC lathe and this lathe is not as sophisticated or should I say automated as my CNC machining center, the milling machine that we were just in looking at. This don't have automatic tool changers and all that stuff on it, but it's still a CNC machine and can hold tolerances down to less than two tenths of a thousandth from part to part. So it's a really accurate machine. Uh, it's got a Fager control on it. This is a uh, conversational or G-code controller and it's pretty simple and really it's a pretty simple machine to operate. But I've got programmed in here now a small little detent ball. Now, I made these balls with a shoulder on them. They almost, like, they almost look like a top hat. If you can picture a top hat in your head. And I'll show you here in a second what one looks like after we make it. The material is set to the correct length. I've got a little stop that I use to set that with. And we're ready to run this first part. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just run this first part. I'm going to zoom you in so that you can see it being made. I don't know if the tool's going to get in the way of that or not, but we'll run one and see what happens. So I'm going to reach in here and hit the start button. That's a finish pass. And now it's going to part it off, and I've got to catch it with this little cup. So then what we'll do is pull the material out. I'm going to try to do that without blocking the camera, but I don't think I can because I can't reach the handle and open it. I'm going to pull this out. We're going to push this in with this little tool until it hits the collet. And then we're going to close the handle again. So this is a 5C collet. All right. And we're ready to do another cycle. I'm going to reposition the camera so you guys can get a better look. Okay, I'm zoomed in pretty close to the part, so maybe you guys can see it now in operation. Okay, so I catch the part in the cup. I could set it up where the part doesn't completely come off in part, but then you gotta break it off manually by hand, and I'd much rather just catch them in the cup. We're not running coolant on these. They're made out of brass, so we don't need coolant. And it's, to me, it's much easier to catch it in the cup. So to set the part, you loosen the chuck, pull that out. I like to put my arm against the tool post, tighten the chuck, and we're ready to run our another part. Now we're making 200 of these ramrod retaining blocks, so we just have to do this 800 times. I need four of these brass pins. I call them balls, detent balls. We need four of them for each ramrod retaining block.
if you notice, I don't put my cup under the part until it's about ready to break off because I'm catching all the chips. I want as much of that swarf as I can to just go down in the bottom of the machine and not into my cup. sort them out of the rest of the chips. Okay, we'll dump these out of the cup. And there's going to be some chips in there. That's why I don't put the cup under the part until it's just about ready to break off. Now, that's just an old t-shirt I had. Worn it for years. The Brotherhood. So, it's just an old t-shirt. We're using it for a rag. Here's one, two, three, four. I thought I made five, but I only see four. Let me see. Well, maybe I only made four of them. I don't remember now. But anyway, we've got four parts. Them are good ones. We're going to take them over now and we're going to assemble a ramrod block. Okay guys, you can see those little detent balls that we just made on the lathe. These are pretty tiny. You can see them in my hand and how small they are. They're an eighth inch in diameter at the ball. They're 187 at the shoulder. We drop those down inside of a hole that's 213, that's a tap drill for the quarter 28, and then we assemble it. So we're ready to assemble one, and we'll do that now. Okay, so we can get a block. I'm going to zoom out quite a bit so that you guys can see what's going on here. We get a block and we lay it down. We drop one of these little detent balls in the block and then we can drop one in the other side and just kind of make a visual that they're standing straight up. Now these little tits, I'm gonna call them, that was left on the part, that's your part off piece. And most of the time when you make a part, you want that completely gone. But on this part, it actually worked out to my benefit because I'm gonna drop this spring down in that hole and it's gonna go right there and help line that up and that's gonna center that in the spring. Now, whether it was there or not, it's gonna stay center because it's in this block and the hole and the tolerances are tight enough, it wouldn't matter if that tit was there. But if that was a different part, that tit might have to be ground off or remachined, put back into a second operation. So now that we've dropped the brass detent balls in the holes, we're gonna put the two springs in, or one spring, I should say, on each end, all right? And then we're gonna put the set screw in Screw it down until it is just flush with the block. Put the second set screw in. Until it is just flush with the block. That's the perfect amount of tension on the little detent balls inside there. Then do the other side, same way. 
pop it in. Make sure it's in the hole. Put the spring in. And put the set screw on. Okay, that's all there is to it. That is a ramrod retaining block that I use in my rifles at Hankins Custom Rifles, and you can just do a test fit to make sure that it works. It slips in, it hangs pretty good, and then you want to pull it out, it'll pull out. So, it won't do this when it's in the gun. It won't overshoot because this is going to hit your recoil lug. That's set up right against the recoil lug. This retaining block here is just I ain't gonna say right against it. There's 10, 15 thousandths clearance in there, but it's not gonna go overshoot the, the block like this or nothing. So it's gonna stop right there on the retaining ring, on the actual jag, and these jags are these jags are drilled to fit Pittman and Parker bullets with the high BC aluminum points, although they will seat any other bullet that you want them to see. I mean, it's made where to work, but they only come with my guns and they work really, really well for what I use them for. This is, like I said, I think the best retaining block or the best retaining mechanism for a ramrod that I know of on the market. It's a lot of work. It's not the easiest to machine to make. There's a lot of precision time and parts on this little bitty thing here for nothing more than a ramrod retaining block but when you pay that much money for your rifle you want to get the best that you can get so i try to put the best that i can into all of my guns ramrods don't matter whether they're muzzle loaders or center fires attention to detail is where it's at and this right here is one of those little details that I put into my guns that uh, sets it above and beyond the average Joe that's just building these in his shop at home with a drill press and a, maybe an engine lathe but if you want these things I do sell them I offer them to custom builders and I sell a lot of them to other guys that's building guns because they also know that that's the best way to hold their ramrods in the gun. And they're charging customers three, four thousand dollars a piece for a gun also. And they don't want their ramrods falling out. And just, it's just a bad deal. So with that retaining block there, it's not going anywhere. Okay guys, that's going to be the conclusion of the video for the ramrod retaining block. It's a little bit of information here at Hankins Custom Rifles. It's a little bit of a tour. I didn't really give a tour of the shop. I might do that one day when I get it all done and everything's back in order and organized. I just added on to the shop, pretty good size little building to put this machine in. I bought it last year and I had to build a building and pour concrete and run wiring and put air conditioning and heat and all that stuff in. So we got all that done, but it's still kind of disorganized. And But we're, we're building rifles right now. We're not really worried about organizing the shop. I gotta get some guns out for the customers, but I can't build them without these ramrod retaining blocks. So I thought I'd do this video, take you guys through it step by step, show you what we've got here at Hankins Custom Rifles. And if you wanna see more videos like this of the CNC stuff, and I know some people are really interested in machining and they like to see this, how stuff's made, um, put me a comment down there at the bottom. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you guys think of the video. I know it was long and drawn out and it might even be boring to some of you. And it's my first video that I've done like this on, on parts or making stuff in the shop. So I need probably little improvements. Um, I might say things over and over again, but that's sometimes not a bad thing if it needs to be said over and over again. But the ramrod retaining block is now done. We're gonna run 200 of these. I'm gonna run the rest of them tomorrow. And then we'll be ready to start putting these in some more rifles. But I was down to, I think I had four of them left. 
and it was time to start making some. So I ordered material last week. We got it up and running. We should be finished with these probably by the end of the day tomorrow, they'll be done. And um, we can move on to bigger and better things. So thumbs up on the videos. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. I know I already said that once, but I'll say it again. And until uh, next time, guys, see you later.